This is a great day. We've been looking forward to this for several years now. It's the culmination of a lot of planning, a lot of effort, and uh, it is the closing of two of our buildings, Bloomfield Tech and North 13th, to the Congressman Payne School of Technology. Um, and as you see around, I don't think you'll find a more beautiful building, more useful building in the entire state. Uh, we have career technical education, that includes things like our construction commons, a courtroom, engineering studios, culinary arts, cosmetology, uh, green science. We have a green roof. We have a greenhouse. Uh, you'll find everything that you need for the 21st century here in this building. The building is so beautiful. It's changed the community. Uh, the residents are happy. Uh, it's just unbelievable. I remember what was here before uh, this school was built, and it was a, a, a blighted I saw in our community and to go from that to what this building is in two years is just miraculous. It's great uh, to be in this magnificent building. As the sheriff of this county I'm very proud, very proud. As a former vocational school student, that's the county vocational school, long time ago, I'm very, very pleased and proud and I can assure you that we will do everything we can to keep this place as pristine and as safe as we possibly can, not just the building, but the entire neighborhood. Looking at how they did the building is very amazing compared to North 13th right now. Um, it's a great change. I mean, merging with Bloomfield Tech is a great opportunity to be here today and graduate in 2021. Uh, hi, my name is Ted Noel. I'm a student at North 13th, moving to Donald Payne Tech. Um, I feel like the school is very it's very huge for a large amount of students that will have beneficial thoughts and that will help them in the future. This school has offered a wide variety of CTEs that can help students in the career path that they want to follow. And I feel like it's a great fit for students who have unique desires and want to follow a career path that they believe is truly for them. My name is Gabriela Batista from North 13th Street Tech. Um, I feel excited for the new school and to meet everybody. And the change is isn't going to be easy, but we could get used to it. But this day took 20 years in the makings. This is something that was uh, we wanted to do for 20 years, and uh, and we made it possible by getting it done. All right, because this used to stand United Hospital, and United Hospital was closed for 20 years. It was a blight on the West Ward community here, and we needed something to bring it alive. And consolidating North 13th and Bloomfield Tech together, and bringing those kids to this brand new facility. It's just it's state of the art. The curriculum is going to be the best, and our kids do very, very well. You got to be able to give them the tools, and that's what we're doing today. Well, today is a really uh, wonderful day. Um, the honor that the county has bestowed upon my father, naming this school after him, uh, would be something that he just would be so thrilled and humbled by. He was a teacher first, and so uh, to name this school after him to what he thought was the most important thing to do is for a youngster to get an education it would just be overwhelming for him. Thank you everyone. If everyone can please find their seats. We're gonna get started. I am humbled and honored to be the first one to officially utter these words. Welcome to the Essex County Donald M. Payne School of Technology. We have a, a, a few speakers today and some performances. Just like you're at a Broadway show, please put your cell phones on silent if you can't shut them off. It's very distracting up here if, um, if that happens. So if you can please put your cell phones on silent. I am now going to ask you to all rise as the Essex County Sheriff's Color Guard presents arms. I'm also going to ask you to remain standing as Essex County School of Technology's own Mark Beckett sings the national anthem and remain standing as Pastor Joe Carter from New Hope Baptist Church leads us in the invocation. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming 
whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled for a word of prayer. God, we now invoke your presence on this place. We thank you for the marvelous legacy of Donald Payne as we gather together in a world that seems so divided. Thank you for this opportunity to come together. Your people, all of your children, we ask that you be pleased with us and this work to the praise of your glory and all of God's people said amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Superintendent Dr. James Peterson and Dixiana Carbonell, Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction of the Essex County Schools of Technology. Good afternoon. On behalf of my Assistant Superintendent, Ms. Dixiana Carbonell, we would like to extend our gratitude to our county executive, Mr. Joseph N. D. Vincenzo, and, Essex, and the Essex County Board of Chosen Freeholders, Father Leahy and the Essex Tech Board of Education, and all the people in the audience who have helped make the Donald M. Payne School of Technology happen. We are eternally grateful for this great opportunity to continue to provide the students of Essex County an exceptional education. At this time, I would like to introduce the Payne Tech Administrative Team, Mr. Love, principal and former graduate of Bloomfield Tech. Dr. Patricia Clark Jeter, Director of Student Related Services. And the assistant principals, Ms. Emily Bonilla, Mr. Sal Lima, and Ms. Carmen Morales. Good afternoon. I want to first thank the county executive whose vision to make this school possible started all of this many, many years ago. I would like to also welcome and thank those invited guests who are joining us, our administrative team here at the vocational schools, and also, last but not least, our students. Uh, I also want to ha have a special thank you to the Payne family, and we're going to make you proud here at Payne Tech. I'm, almost, I'm always proud to say that I'm a, a graduate, class of 81, of Bloomfield Tech. I'm calling up two of our students, one from Bloomfield Tech and one from North 13th Street. Who knows? They might be returning as principal one day and they can say, I graduated from Payne Tech. Our first student is Erica Padilla. Good afternoon, how are you? My name is Erica Padilla. I am an 11th grade student at Bloomfield Tech and my CTE is Graphic Arts. Many of my family members have graduated from Bloomfield Tech, but I'm excited to be the first of my family to graduate from, whew, sorry, Payne, Donald M. Payne Senior School of Technology. I am very excited and honored to be <laughs> one of the first to graduate, and I know it will be an exciting and unforgettable experience. Thank you.
Good afternoon, my name is Rajan Wright. I currently attend North 13th Street Tech and I am in the construction trade CTE. My peers and I are excited for the upcoming merge with Bloomfield Tech. We are all honored to be attending a school named after a legend coming from Essex County, Donald M. Payne Sr. I believe this is a great way for Essex County to carry on his legacy forever. Thank you. Let's hear it again for those students. They were a little nervous. They did a great job. We are in the great, dynamic city of Newark with a great mayor who's doing outstanding things from one part of the city to the other with the help of his council. I'd like the mayor of Newark, Roz Baraka, to come up and say a few words, give a welcome. And we are in the West Ward, so as soon as the mayor's done with his remarks, I'm gonna ask that councilman from the West Ward, Joe McCullum, come up and say a few words. Let's hear from Mayor Roz Baraka. Thank you, Phil. So, so the councilman to come on up with me. Uh, just wanna first thank the county executive, uh, Joe DiVincenzo, for his vision, uh, for making this incredible school happen. I used to think Central was the best looking school in the state. Uh, now, this school right here uh, kind of ups us a little bit. I walked in the door. It is tremendous. Uh, it is exactly what we need uh, for the kids of Essex County. Uh, they deserve this and more. Uh, so I am uh, excited uh, and I'm proud of being in this building. I just want to thank you for your vision and your team and the work that you've done. Uh, the former governor who's here for helping make this happen as well, Governor Christie, uh, for uh, all of us that are here today, all the elected officials, uh, Senator Sweeney, McLaughlin, uh, our Lieutenant Governor here as well. Everyone is here with us. We want to thank you for being here in Essex County uh, with us this morning. And uh, more than anything, I want to thank uh, the Payne family. Our now Congressman Donald Payne Jr. His uncle, his uncle, our Assemblyman is here as well, still Assemblyman. Uh, just want to thank the Payne family. Donald Payne Sr. means a lot to the residents of the city of Newark. I know he means a lot to many other people, but as a Newark resident, as someone that was born and raised in the city, uh, seeing him with my dad working tirelessly to make Newark the best city in the state of New Jersey, to make sure that African Americans had their fair share in this state and in this country, Donald Payne deserves this and 10,000 times more than this. We are honored to be here, to have something that we can walk past every day and see how beautiful it is in the name of Donald Payne Sr. We should all be proud and hopefully the young people in this school will have an opportunity to learn and understand what Donald Payne meant to all of us in the state of New Jersey, no matter your nationality, no matter your race, your language. Donald Payne meant a lot to the residents of the state of New Jersey and particularly to the residents of the great city of Newark. God bless you, incredible day here. Good afternoon. Uh, I got thrown off my game a little bit when I saw uh, Reverend Mamie Lee sitting down here. I remember the battles that she fought for this community over a long, uh, a long period of time. And, and I'm just so happy to see you this morning. Uh, Reverend Dr. Mamie Lee, oh my goodness. Uh, listen, I just wanna, you know, it's an emotional day for me. I remember coming here when it was United Hospitals uh, and it was a blighted spot in the area, and I would meet with the previous owners, and uh, then I would meet with Joe D. And for it to come to this in this short amount of time is just a miracle, uh, a miracle for this community. Uh, it's, it's turned the community completely around, across the street where there was illicit drug trade, all of that's gone, they're cleaning up the area, they're helping us to clean up the city, and I, you know, I thank the uh, Freeholder Board, I thank Joe D, I thank everybody, I thank former uh, Governor Christie. Joe D, Joe D is say, I'm gonna do this, Councilman, I'm gonna do that, and when you turn around and look up, it's done. 
He's the best I've ever seen. So uh, I want to say one thing about uh, Donald Payne. Uh, Do Donald Payne, and I said before that I kind of model myself on Donald Payne. Uh, if you want to be an elected official, he's a role model for all of us. Uh, I worked at the VA. I told this story before. I worked at the VA. He used to come to the ward. I, I ran a day treatment center downtown. And every year he would come, uh, like four years in a row. And the, the, the administrators would be upset. How is he, a, a therapist, getting the, council, the congressman to come to, the war, to, to his ward every year? And I said, that's Donald Payne. So, you know, they used to get mad at me, but he insisted. And I stopped one year, and I ran into him at PNC Bank downtown. He said, you didn't invite me this year. I said, well, Congressman, I thought you were busy. I didn't want to bother you. He said, invite me, put it on my calendar. And lo and behold, he was there. So he was a mentor, he was a friend, and he was a role model for me. I congratulate the Payne family. You're, you're from good stock. Thank you very much. We have a, a special gift, a picture of the school for the mayor and the councilman. Thank you very much. The legislative branch of county government is the board of chosen freeholders. They work hand in hand with Joe D getting all these amazing things done that Mayor Baraka and uh, Councilman McCollum talk about. I'd like to call up the president of the board of chosen freeholders, Mr. Brendan Gill to recognize his, uh, the freeholders who are here and also to say a few remarks. Let's hear it, freeholder Brendan Gill. Good afternoon. First of all, I think I'd like to give it up for uh, our Essex County Chief of Staff, uh, Phil Elijah, who just does a great job day in and day out uh, for all of us. Uh, to Senator, Senator Menendez, uh, to our Senate President, uh, Steve Sweeney, uh, to our Assembly Speaker, Craig Coughlin, uh, Mayor Baraka, uh, to our Lieutenant Governor, uh, Sheila Oliver, uh, and all the elected officials uh, who are here uh, today, to our county executive, our constitutional officers, uh, my fellow freeholders, our department and division directors who are here, uh, especially to our dear friend and brother, Congressman Donald Payne Jr., who is with us, absolutely. And our dear friend Bill Payne, who is here with us. I bring you greetings on behalf of the legislative branch of the county, the Board of Chosen Freeholders. I'm proud to acknowledge my fellow board members who are present today uh, and who helped make this day possible. I'd like to acknowledge freeholder Pat Siebold, who is here with us. Our vice president, freeholder Wayne Richardson, who is here. Freeholder Carlos Pomeris. Freeholder Janine Bauer. Freeholder Levy Jones. And our clerk to the board, Freeholder Deborah Davis Ford, who is here with us. I'd also like to give a special recognition to Governor Christie, for I know this day would not be possible without his help and support as a true partner to the County of Essex. Thank you, Governor. Today is an awesome day. And it's awesome on so many levels. It's awesome because we dedicate this building, but we are also honoring the legacy of a man whose mission and goal was to enrich the lives of others. There is an old proverb that says, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. The congressman clearly understood this. He understood that he could affect positive change through education. He aimed to inspire young minds from similar walks of life as his. He was an example. He proved that no matter what the challenge or the challenges that he faced in his own personal life, that you could teach, that you could lead, and that you could make a difference. Early in his career, he answered the call and became a teacher and a coach 
right here in the city of Newark before entering into politics. Today, I feel very inspired, and I know many of us feel inspired, that we feel like one of the family. That was the beauty of the congressman, in my humble opinion. He spent time with you. When I was a young man at Seton Hall University, looking to get involved in politics and government with a desire to serve, I called his office. He didn't know me from anyone. He made an appointment to see me. He spent a few, months, a few minutes with me, just a young constituent and student looking to get involved. It's something that I never, ever forgot. It put me, and, uh, and many of, I think, us in this room on a trajectory, a trajectory to serve uh, and to lead. And uh, I know that without his help, I wouldn't be standing here before you today. So this dedication brings things, Mr. County Executive, in many ways for all of us uh, into full circle. It's a permanent testament and a reminder of the power of one and the pain legacy. So I, thank you. So as I bring my comments to a close, I wanna thank the County Executive Joe DiVincenzo for his vision, for his vision, uh, and to congratulate you on how wonderfully it has come to fruition. When we stood in this very spot two years ago, this was a plot of land that was abandoned and needed some work, needed some work. And today it has been transformed into a state-of-the-art educational campus rivaling the finest in the county and I might say the country for generations to come. It has made us all proud as Essex County residents and continues to affirm your agenda, Mr. County Executive, to put Essex County first. We have forged efforts here in Essex County that have set the bar high, raising the standards for quality government and education. Lastly, the late Congressman Donald Payne Sr. was an advocate for education and a champion in global affairs and has left an indelible mark on Essex County, this nation, and abroad. And I can think of no better person that this campus should be named here. So to all gathered, yes, today is an awesome day that marks the beginning of a new chapter in Essex County history and one that I can say we are all proud to be a part of. All the best, thank you. Great job. Teresa, Senator Ruiz is gonna come up later and introduce some of the state guests out of here, but it, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize my friend, the Commissioner of Education from the state of New Jersey who's here. I'd like him to wave and say hello, Lamont Repolay. Commissioner, thank you for being here. And the dynamic chairman of the Democratic Party in Essex County, my good friend, I'd like to recognize Leroy Jones. Way to be here, Leroy, thank you. Thank you for all your help. And you don't want to hear from me without further ado. Ladies and gentlemen, I've heard them practice. Listen to the words in this song, specially written for today's opening in honor of Donald Payne, the student of the West Caldwell School of Technology. How did this man from Newark, New Jersey, grow up to be in Congress? From Behringer to Seton, who always working his hardest. Inside, he knew he was something more than a degree. This man was ready to fight, protest, and succeed. He had ambitions to be the first black congressman, but he faced defeat to the longtime dean of delegation. In 1988, he finally saw opportunity as Rodino chose not to seek a 21st term. Payne said, I want to be a congressman. To serve as a role model for young people that are taught to all street corners. He knew he had a purpose to help these young people that he used to be. Nothing is as powerful as a dream. A former teacher, he said policies to make college more affordable. Always looking out for those seeking a degree. A man on a mission to help fight for working families. Honestly, what an impactful man, can't you see? We are not going away, our shot. We are not going away, our shot. This school is named after pain with all that he gained. He put it into education, so we put it in our brains. 2018. Young, gifted, talented, another waste of talent. No, no, I'm not having it. I just like pain, overcame all the challenges. My opportunity is right here, and I'm grabbing it. Young, intellectual, everything we trying to be. 
generation full of scholars. That's what you bought me. Bro, keep doubting me. You people count on me. All we got, S is County. That keeps supporting me. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage New Jersey State Senator and Essex County Deputy Chief of Staff, Teresa Ruiz. Good afternoon, everyone. What amazing performance. Chop, you should be so proud, so proud. When we think about this building, we really should not focus on the beautiful furniture and the architecture. We should think about what's going to happen in the future classrooms. Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. This is a man who's photographed with the individual that we're honoring with the name of the school right outside in a beautiful banner. A friend to us all, our congressman, but someone who was critically synonymous with international fights for equality. And it's so proud to be part of a team who has put this effort together. When we think about moving the state forward, when we think about putting our children first, there are two individuals who in their capacities recognize that education is a huge game changer. Let's give a great Essex County welcome to our state Senate president, Steve Sweeney, and our speaker of the assembly, my friend, Assemblyman Craig Coughlin. faster <laughs> and shorter <laughs> and better looking we're gonna take this act on the road thank you very much and thank you senator I, if I were Lynn Manuel Miranda I'd be a little afraid of some of those kids huh how good were they um, It is my pleasure and privilege to be with so many of you today, and, and, and especially uh, so many of the dignities, go dignitaries, Governor Christie, Senator Menendez, Congressman Payne, my colleagues in the legislature, and of course, uh, County Executive Joe uh, D. Uh, this is a, a magnificent day because this is such a wonderful facility and it's filled with such hope and uh, excitement about the future. Uh, you know, this is, a, it's also a tribute uh, to certainly Congressman Payne and his great contribution to this city, to our state, and to the nation. But it's also a testament to what we can do if we do it together. And Governor Christie, thank you for that. Thanks for making this all uh, possible. I think perhaps more than anything, it might be a testament to Joe D., uh, who is, uh, above all else, a man who has dedicated himself to the county of Essex, who has a remarkable attention to detail. Uh, I got a chance to tour just a little bit with him before, and he was pointing out the things that needed to get done. Uh, usually that comes with a budget ask at this time in the, in the year, but not yet. I guess, okay, I guess I'll hear from Ileana. Uh, he's, I do also want to point out that he is a remarkably frugal man. Uh, Senator Ruiz pointed out as we were cutting the ribbon, I think this, it's, been re, it's been reused about 50 or 60 times because there's, the there's tape all over the thing. So I, I don't care what Murphy or Sweeney says, I'm getting you 50 bucks for a new ribbon there. <laughs> so... But anyway, uh, it, is, it is a terrific to be here. This is a remarkable facility. It's going to be exciting for the students. They're going to do great things, uh, and that is because of so many of you. Thanks very much for letting me have a minute of your time. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I, guess, I guess it's the afternoon. Good afternoon to everyone. What a wonderful occasion, right or wrong? Look what has been accomplished here. This is remarkable. It's uh, probably 20 years of Joe D's life, right? About 20 years he envisioned this. And uh, thanks to Governor Christie and his willingness to work in a bipartisan fashion, 
we're changing the lives of a whole lot of children. You know that. We are giving children an opportunity that normally would not have been here. And Craig, I haven't shown you, but the ask is already in from Joe. It comes in real early. He doesn't, you can ask Governor Christie, it starts a year in advance. But again, this is a game changer. And the name and after Donald Payne, a warrior, a, really a warrior, someone that fought was an example. You know, too often we look at different people to be role models. Donald Payne was the ultimate role model, an educator, a coach, uh, to rise up, to be a congressman, to be a leader in the United States. Congress was remarkable. So what you get is working together, we did put Essex County first again, but we absolutely put the children first. It was an effort. It was an effort that was remarkable. And you know, uh, I want to mention the LG, because she's yours, you know that, Sheila Oliver. She's one of yours, you know that. And she was always, always wonderful to work with, and I'm so proud of her as being a lieutenant governor. Look, this is a day of celebration, but this is a future of opportunities. It's a future of dreams. We have so many young people, like you saw on that stage, that their lives have been changed. They don't know why or how, but just a bunch of people got together and said, they have value, they count, they mean something. And I told to the mayor, think of what this school has done to this section of town. It's transformed this section of the town. So everyone, everyone, congratulations. Great day. She's been mentioned before, and it's been said, because of individuals like Congressman Payne, who opened the doors and paved the way for many of us to be first, she has had the opportunity to be a trailblazer herself. Our friend, our Lieutenant Governor, Ms. Sheila Oliver. Good afternoon, everyone. Orange and brown. <laughs> um, you know, I have often told the county executive through the years that if he didn't want to be our county executive, he would have a phenomenal, phenomenal career in construction. <laughs> he leaves no stone unturned. He is a visionary. Someone said it earlier, but Joe is a visionary. Now, people don't generally think of a football player as a visionary, and we all know Joe's love of athletics. But I think that he has demonstrated to the people of Essex County and the people of New Jersey that he can step up and he can make Phoenix rise out of the ashes, because that's what he has done here. That's what he has done here. I can remember, it was back when I was a member of the Freeholder Board, when the whole issue of United Hospitals closing came up. And there were all kinds of ideas of how to maintain this space as a healthcare facility. But we all know the challenges that exist in healthcare today. And, you know, the county struggled with that for several years. And the conclusion was drawn this site would never again be a healthcare institution. Joe recognized the need for vocational education, for technology being introduced into curriculums. And I think that this building is a monument to the vision that he had in terms of educating children or young people 
in the county of Essex. We are not going to be able to have enough seats for all of the young people who will aspire to gain an education here. And to name it after Don Payne, first of all, Joe always acknowledges he would not be county executive if it were not for the late Congressman Don Payne. It was Congressman Payne who stepped up, and I see my former assembly mate, Tom Giblin, over there. No disrespect, Tom. But the congressman decided to support Joe. And Joe has proven that he is doing a great job for us. Congressman Payne, many of you know, was my neighbor. I lived at Sevenbach, he lived at 14. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at our congressman, Junior, and. Nicole and Wanda, and you know, I just think of them still as five-year-olds. Um, but you know, Congressman Payne was the president of uh, my block association. And when I was about 11 years old, the doorbell rang, I went to answer it, it was this man, and he asked me, was my father home? And I said, no, he didn't get home from work yet. He said, well, when he comes home, tell him to cut his hedges, they're too long. <laughs> And that was my first uh, introduction to Congressman Donald Payne. Subsequently, uh, when I got in high school, everyone knows that the congressman had a lifelong relationship with the international Y and with the Y all across the country. And he was the first African American to hold a national and international leadership role in the Y movement. But he organized a clubs of young people who met at the Y every Tuesday and Thursday night. I was one of those young people, and that is really when we now see he was beginning to cultivate leadership capability within us. So uh, we thank him for all that he did in that regard as well. So to Donald and to Wanda and to Nicole and Bill particularly you, because we know how you drove by this site every single day to make certain that Everything was in order, and uh, you were a partner with Joe in making certain that this project was, as, as Joe likes, on budget and on time. And I know that you worked with him on that. And I too want to uh, thank Governor Christie because he agreed to support the state financing the construction of vocational schools just as other K-12 schools. Um, you would not see this building if it were not for Chris Christie. And Senate President uh, Sweeney uh, was right there. Uh, he also understood and embraced how important vocational ed was and how we needed to expand opportunity. So Steve, we thank you as the Senate President for moving this along as well. So uh, it's a great day for everyone. It's a great day for Essex County, no doubt. It's a great day for the Payne family. And I would be remiss if I did not pay homage to this man. Monsignor Lee. Monsignor is the chairman of the board of the Essex County Vocational School System. You know that he also is the head of St. Benedict's Prep. And he has cut no corners in terms of his commitment to the young people at Essex County Voc. They are getting the same kind of opportunity, curriculum, and leadership that the young people at St. Benedict's are getting. So we thank you for that. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Next, I'll ask a friend to all of us, someone who is recognized across this country for his efforts, a partner to Congressman Payne as part of the federal delegation, our very own Senator Bob Menendez.
Well, good afternoon, and thank you, Senator Rees, not only for your introduction, but for your leadership in education in our state. You have an outstanding state senator in Teresa Rees. <laughs> Reverend clergy, to all the distinguished uh, guests that are here, to the Payne family above all, it's an honor to be here with so many students and teachers and leaders from across New Jersey to celebrate the opening of the Essex County Donald M. Payne School of Technology. And I want to salute the county executive uh, for making this incredible school that will fulfill the hopes and dreams and aspirations of a new generation of Essex County residents a reality. This is one of the greatest things, Joe, that you have ever done. Congratulations to you and the Board of Chosen Freeholders. And Mr. Speaker, I, I just want to say, if you know Joe D, and Governor Christie can tell you this, $50 isn't going to make a, a dent. So uh, just get ready for a lot more zeros after that $50. So for those of us who had, as I did, the privilege of working alongside Congressman Donald Payne for many years, this school is a fitting tribute to his life and to his legacy. I see the mascot of the school is a lion. Donald Payne was a lion of the United States Congress in his advocacy for people each and every day. <laughs> Congressman Payne spent his life fighting for fairness, for justice, for equal opportunity for all. And he believed in the power of public education to transform lives. Before he was elected to Congress, he was an educator here in Newark and in the Passaic Public School Districts. He served as the national president of the YMCA. And as New Jersey's first African-American congressman, he spent 12 terms in the House of Representatives fighting for the values that we all hold dear. Values like opportunity for all, like fairness in our justice system, like equal rights under the law. As an educator and as a congressman, my friend Donald Payne believed that if given a fair shot and the right resources, every child could reach for their dreams and fulfill their God-given potential. And I know he is looking down today saying, we're going to fill a lot of God-given potentials of these young people and the 1,200 students who will be here at this tech school. He believed that every person, every person had value, something to contribute to our state, to our country, and to the world. For the 1,200 students who will be served by this state-of-the-art facility, some of who are here today, the Donald Payne School of Technology will be a place not only for you to learn new skills, but to discover the talents that lie inside of you. What do you have to offer your community, your country, and this world? Perhaps in our, it's an artistic eye, as we saw in the performance, a thirst for invention, a passion for solving problems, whether it be in a science lab, a courtroom, or a Fortune 500 boardroom. Congressman Donald Payne spent his entire career working to solve problems and improve people's lives. Whether it was helping more students afford college, standing up for the rights of workers, tackling global challenges in Africa and beyond, he was an extraordinary human being. And I know that for many of us here today, the fights he took on are fights we carry forward today. As New Jersey's senior senator, there have been times in the last year and a half that I thought of my friend Congressman Payne and what he would be thinking about is happening in Washington today. I think some of the values that he championed throughout his life, equality, economic fairness, opportunity for all, some of those that are under assault, he'd be speaking out loudly. In times like these, we remember the life and the legacy of Congressman Donald Payne. We must build on his legacy and continue to fight to realize the promise of this country and each and every one of us. The idea that in America, anything is possible because everyone is welcome and all of us are equal. That if you work hard, you get ahead. And that if you do your best, you give your children a brighter future. Today, as we celebrate this new school of technology, we celebrate new opportunities for the students of Essex County. 
opportunities that will help young people gain new skills, succeed in this 21st century, and build a brighter future for generations to come. So I want to congratulate the incredible Payne family. All of them have made so many contributions. But I want to say to Donald Payne Jr., my colleague in the House of Representatives, you took on the torch by, from your father. But I tell you something, you're making it burn even brighter. You should be proud of the success that you're having in the House of Representatives on behalf of all of us in New Jersey. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, as I normally start off any remarks I make, it is truly an honor and privilege to be here today on such a auspicious occasion. And as I was watching the video just now, I was wondering, uh, you know, there are a lot of accolades and things, areas named after wonderful people that have been a part of this project. Joe, I could have had the Donald M. Payne Jr. trash compactor <laughs> or the, you know, something, you know. There was something left, you know, the, you know, the, the parking lot or, you know, the Donald M. Payne Jr. tarmac or something. But, but um, no, it's a true testament to Joe's vision um, to make sure <clears throat> that in a project as wonderful as this, that people have been instrumental in getting us here today be acknowledged for their work. And I want to thank everyone that has made this day possible for us to stand up here. I have brought with me not only my sisters, but um, uh, my wife, Beatrice, who... Um, You know, I have sometimes a bad habit of um, sitting down and not recognizing her, so I figured if I brought her with me, I'd remember, <laughs> remember today. And um, also, um, three people that were very important to him, Donald, Jack, and Yvonne, uh, his um, children, triplets, my children. And, um, you know, I think he was just about to kind of, he gotten a little tired of me and was about to get rid of me, but I had the triplets, so that kind of <laughs> saved me, you know. So he figured he'd keep me around a little longer, but, you know, he was a teacher first. Education meant everything to him. And I don't think there is a bef more befitting honor that you could have given him. You know, he traveled the world and went to areas where people were downtrodden and didn't have the advantages that most of us sometimes take for granted here in the United States. But education was always the key. And as Lieutenant Governor Oliver mentioned, um, some of her earliest uh, interactions with the congressman was through his YMCA programs where he took young kids that were standing on the corners and had their little cliques and gangs and brought them down to the YMCA and taught them the fraternity and sorority system as opposed to these non-productive groups that they were hanging in. And that was really his catalyst. He used the YMCA for young people and he found that venue to help young people strive. And um, there was no one that we, he was prouder of than young Sheila Y. Oliver from Seven Bach Avenue. <laughs> yes, education was the most important thing to the congressman. And throughout his life, irrespective of where he went, education was the key. When he went to Congress, 
he joined the Education and Workforce Committee. No mistake. This was his life. This was his love. And it's no mistake that I have gone into public service and my, both my sisters are educators. So he influenced us a great deal as well. And my sister Wanda, who just retired after how many years? 31, 31 years as a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> in, the, in the Newark public school system. And uh, my sister Nicole, who is assistant superintendent in the Patterson. Oh, sorry. I'm promoting her already. Director. <laughs> director of special education uh, in the Patterson School System. And I've been fortunate to follow his footsteps through public life. He was a freeholder first, and that's my first job. Then went on to the Newark, um, board, Newark City Council, and that was my next elected office, and then he won um, his first seat in Congress in the middle of his second term as a North City Councilman. And I was in uh, the, my second term, middle of my second term, when I went to Congress. Uh, so it has um, really been a legacy to follow. It is a, um, uh, a labor of love that I have been uh, honored to follow. Um, you know, Mayor Baraka was very kind. Our fathers were schoolmates at Barringer together and um, followed each other in different aspects of public life, but always to the betterment of the people here uh, in Newark and uh, Essex County. And so it's not a mistake that we find ourselves in these positions together working for the betterment of the city of Newark and the 10th Congressional District together. And it, it is an honor to work with him um, every single day on making those things happen here in the city of Newark. And to uh, Councilman McCullough, I remember those early days when I first took office and you came to me and talked to me about what was happening at the Veterans, um, Veterans uh, Hospital and throughout the administration. and. Um, have not gone on um, uh, un unheard ears. So I continue to try to work on issues around veterans. Let me just say that um, it is wonderful to have this building named after the late congressman. But what is going to be important is what happens inside this building for these young people in these classrooms to give them the opportunities to do the best that they can to strive for the stars, to get a first class education like every child in this country deserves. <laughs> then that will be the honor to my father what happens for these young people. And let me say to you young people, you've been given the best to work with here. Apply yourselves, do yourselves proud because your education goes with you the rest of your life. No one can ever take that from you. And it will help you immensely along the way. Do the things that you want to do for yourselves in the future. So dream, dream, shoot high, and get the education that you truly deserve. And I'll leave you with a poem that stayed with me that my father told to me many times to help me believe that you could do anything you want if you were given an equal opportunity to strive 
and it said, whether you had blonde, fleecy locks or black complexion, it does not forfeit nature's claim. Skin may differ, but affection dwells in black and white the same. And were I so tall as to reach the poles or span the oceans with my hands, I must be measured by my soul. The mind is the standard of a man. Thank you. Hi, I'm not going to be long. The thing about it is when everyone else speaks first, they said everything that you wanted to say. And I don't want to be redundant. But I would like to say thank you, Joe D, for your vision and making this happen. And I've always said that I know your feelings for my father were genuine. You, vote, you were there for him when he was sick. And you've done things in this this particular project, there are many things that are named after my father. This he would be elated because he was into education and just um, progressing. It didn't have to be, you didn't have to get a PhD. As long as you were doing something with your life, he supported that. And um, his passion was helping people here and globally you know, worried about the children over in Africa who didn't have enough to eat, uh, the malaria situation, uh, HIV AIDS. And I believe that when I was a teacher, they said that you can teach empathy. I argue with that point. I think that's a God-given gift, empathy. And because of his empathy, it allowed him to go beyond just doing a little. He wanted to just continue to help people. So thank you again, Joey D. And I would like to acknowledge my son came, Shakir, who if anybody knows Shakir, he was very, him and my father were close to. He went to St. Benedict's and Father Ed took good care of him. And my aunt, his sister Catherine, she's right here. She was the matriarch of the family. And as my brother, did one of his famous poems. Um, I have a quote that he always liked to say also, and this is the epitome of him. Okay. It's from Matthew. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was... I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank you all for coming out on a suspicious day celebrating my father. Uh, Senator Ruiz stated, Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. My father came from meager beginnings, but he had major dreams. Dreams realized and not deferred. 
And today, as we celebrate the opening of this amazing educational center, this dream catcher, if you will, this is a testament to his legacy. But it is much more. This moment is more than just an accolade, an exemplification, or an attestation of a person whose life was impactful to this in many communities, but a look toward the future. This moment is pregnant with purpose and possibility. Education is the key to unlock the doors of opportunity. And just because you open a door, it does not mean that it will be easy to walk through. At times, we will have to push our way in with perseverance. And as our young people enter through these doors with ease, prayerfully, they will lead differently than when they had entered, emboldened with fortitude as they are prepared for the challenges of the future. The future belongs to young people with an education and imagination to create, according to former President Barack Obama. It is significant that this school sits in the seat of the county at its heart in this great city of Newark. Newark is a city that is rooted in its rich traditions but continues to remain an epicenter of diversity. This is an ever-evolving diversity that continues to shape the landscape of this and the surrounding sister cities. Whether you identify this moment in Newark as a renaissance, a revitalization, or a rebirth, what we are experiencing is phenomenal, and this center of education is proof thereof. These young people will be primed and prepared locally, but will be able to complete, compete and succeed globally. Albert Einstein said, education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. I am proud and excitedly hopeful of the seeds of inspiration and learning that will take root, grow, and spread, creating a lushness that will manifest in future graduates who will go out into the world and in some way make a difference, to make a difference in the way that the namesake of this school did, and yet to go further. Yes, go farther than the preceding generation to be the bastions of scholarship, community, and social justice. Indeed, these students will learn from the accomplishments and the struggles of our father, but more importantly, they will learn and know themselves. The challenge will be to maintain this momentum with which that has started here today and that we feel today to allow his legacy to permeate not only throughout this building, but beyond. For all of us to know anything that is possible for all of us to know that anything is possible through faith, grit, awareness of self. It is the faith to the believe and to follow your dreams, the grit to get it done, and the self-awareness to continue to reflect and evolve as a person and as a human being. As a community, we must continue to champion the good, to champion the future, and to champion the support of it. Although currently negativity and strife are very real, so is the prominence of positivity and harmony. And let us strive toward that as our focus. I leave you with this. In the auspicious words of Malcolm X, education is our passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today. Thank you so much for your time. Good afternoon to everyone. I really hadn't thought that I was gonna speak here this afternoon, but Donald Payne Sr. is my brother, and I think I am the oldest family member of the Paynes that is left. And, uh, And I've always felt, you know, sort of nervous about standing in front of people. Just like the last time I stood in front of a crowd like this for my brother, uh, everybody said I did very well. So I think that went to my head a little bit. <laughs> but I just want to say I am so proud of this place. I'm so glad you had this for the children. They need it so very much. And I just want to say that since I am the oldest person in our family, 
I'd just like to tell you that I turned 87 a few months. And I wouldn't have said that years ago, but now that I am so old that I feel proud to be 87 years old. And just like they told me when I was speaking that, you know, you did good, they told me you look good for 87 years old. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I didn't think I was gonna speak today, and, uh, but I'm just here, I, I feel, that I have to be here, because Donald was such a good brother. He was such a good brother. He would, you know, uh, send me across the country to go to the, uh, you know, to the programs they had. And he, he, was, he was so good. And every time I think about him now, I have a big picture of him, and of him and I. And every time I think about him, it just, you know, I just miss him so much. And he was a good brother to me and to my other brother, William Payne. And well, that's all. I have another, just one brother. My other, Donald is in heaven. So, uh, and my, my nieces and my nephews, and uh, they're all fine. But I just want to say, I'm glad that I, I didn't start crying. And I'm glad <laughs> that I'm here. And, and yeah, so, yeah, so. <laughs> okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage former governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie, and former first lady, Mary Pat Christie. Good afternoon. Mary Pat and I are both thrilled to be here today. And today is really just not a day for a speech, but a day for thank yous. Uh, I want to thank uh, the Senate president who had to depart, but um, for being a partner um, in getting these kind of things done. And I want to thank the lieutenant governor who was the speaker when we did all of this together. Um, it couldn't have been done without the three of us. Everyone's learning as we continue to learn. As three people get in a room and try to make a deal. And um, the speaker and the Senate president and I did that a lot over the course of the four years that we got a chance to work together. So it's so great not only to be in Essex County, but to have the Lieutenant Governor here looking well, doing well, and helping to lead the state. I'm proud to have you as my friend, Sheila. But we know that even for me as a, as a son of Essex County, my dad at the Ann Street School, my mom a graduate of West Side High School, and me spending the first five years of my life on South Orange Avenue and 14th Street. Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? Um, <laughs> I didn't just sprout up at amendum. Um, for those of us who love Essex County, we know that everything that happens here, or at least everything that has happened here, since uh, 2002 has been the product of the, the sweat and the energy and the vigor and the relentlessness of the county executive, Joe DiVincenzo. I remember when this project started, Phil and Joe came down to my office. They asked for a meeting with me. They didn't tell me what it was about. We just need to see you. It'll be really short. You know, it's, it's like the checks in the mail, right? <laughs> so they came down, and I knew I was in trouble when Phil came walking in with a whole bunch of poster boards that he was holding underneath his arm. <laughs> like, 
I am sure there are architectural renderings on that poster board that are about to cost me and the people of the state of New Jersey a lot of money. And that's exactly what it was. It was Joe's vision for what this site would look like, what this school would look like. And he came in to sell me on the idea that bringing the Votech education in the county of Essex into the 21st century was something that was long overdue. Uh, the only thing that day that was short was the amount of time it took me to make the decision. Um, it didn't take me but two minutes to say to Joe, okay, let's get going. And we did, and this is the result of it. And I would just say to Joe, thank you for that relentlessness. When you're governor, you can be distracted by lots of things. And lots of things that may seem important at the moment, but that are really peripheral. That, you know, the press is on you for something on that particular day. I knew a little bit about that. There's <laughs> different interest groups that may be coming at you from one angle or another. But in the end, the things that you build that help to change lives are the things that really should get your attention. And as he always was able to do, Joe grabbed me by the lapels that day and made me pay attention to this. And because he did, we're here. Wow. Working together, compromising, listening to each other, and not being afraid to decide. Not being afraid to decide is what leadership is all about. And that's why Joe has been a great leader of this county for the last 16 years. And I'm confident for at least another four, maybe more if his wife will let him. And all of us benefit from it. Not just the students who will be here will be the direct beneficiaries, but everybody in the state will benefit from the fact that now we will have young men and women who are trained to go out and do extraordinary things for the other citizens of the state. And so for me, this is something that not only puts Essex County first, but by putting Essex County first, it puts the future, the economic future of the state of New Jersey first. So uh, I am really proud to be back here in my home county. Um, I am overwhelmed by the gesture, Joe, um, of naming that courtroom after me. And, and I, you showed some of those pictures up there. Who was that guy? Especially that old picture that you showed of me as U.S. Attorney. I don't recognize him. Um, and I'm, Don, I'm, I'm going to go right to bat for you starting when I walk down here to get that trash compactor named after you. <laughs> you deserve at least that, my friend. At least that, maybe a little bit more. So, Joe, thank you for having Mary Pat and I back today. We are thrilled to be here. Uh, and between your leadership and the leadership of Father Ed, I know that this vocational and technical school will produce some extraordinary results over the decades to come. Thank you all for having us. We appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Father Edwin Leahy, Board President of the Essex County Schools of Technology. Where are the lions? Let me hear the lions. Are they here? Somebody told me the lions were back there. Where are the students from Payne Tech? Let me hear your voice if you're going to be a student at Payne Tech. That's what I'm talking about. I have news. That's just, I just, number one, want to thank uh, the county executive. I had no idea that my name was going to be on a wall. I'm, I'm grateful uh, for that uh, gesture. But I want the students to know uh, that uh, Dr. Peterson has spoken to uh, the board and my colleagues on the board 
uh, that uh, the construction CTE will only be, will only have bridge building. There is no wall building in the construction trades. And I want the, uh, the students at our county vocational and technical schools, all three of them, uh, to be bridge builders. We do much better as people when we build bridges between people and not walls. An eighth grade graduate of St. Benedict's Prep on Friday night, I was talking to him about next year. He was all excited about being a freshman at Payne Tech. When we build bridges between people and institutions, we do much better. And I want the students to realize, as you sit here today, that this building that you will come into every day is a result of bridge building between a Republican governor and a Democratic county executive. Bridge building, we do much better. So every day when you come to school, it will be your responsibility to teach those coming behind you that as they walk around with Donald M. Payne Tech on a t-shirt, or Donald M. Payne Tech on a varsity jacket, or Donald M. Payne Tech on a windbreaker, to remind everyone that Donald Payne Tech are bridge builders. Thank you. Don't do for kids what kids can do for themselves. And lastly, I want the, the students to realize there's a little bit of twist in language that goes on uh, among us that the dignitaries are you. Everybody you've heard speaking this morning needs your vote or your parents' vote to keep their job. So all of today will be meaningless if you don't bring life to the building. So we're counting on you. Congratulations to the Lions of Paint Tech. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage former New Jersey State Assemblyman William Payne. Good afternoon. Um, you may know my name is Bill Payne. Uh, I'm the other brother. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know whether any of you have ever heard of the Corsican brothers, but I know when, when I was a young guy, my father took my brother and me to the Lowell's Theater downtown to see the Corsican brothers. And it, you know the story, it was uh, brothers who were very, very close. Uh, and as a matter of fact, they could even feel each other's emotions if they're even separated far away. If someone hurt one of them, the other one would feel it too, et cetera. So uh, uh, Donald and I grew up in the city of Newark and North Ward, and uh, uh, maybe that's how we became something like the Corsican Brothers, I don't know. But uh, the, the fact is that um, uh, what I wanted to say, first of all, before I forgot it, is that Donald Payne made contributions around the world. He tried to bring peace where there was war, he tried to bring relief to people who were suffering. He went to places where, as you know, sometimes even shot at his plane. You may have heard about that. But my brother told me, uh, Bill, that's not the first time that something like that has happened. It's just that I never said anything about it. But he went wherever he could go to help re resolve problems that existed. And some of you may know, you all know about his trips to Africa and where he tried to lift the people. Um, some of you also must know about his trips to Ireland where Donald Payne was, uh, was regarded as a hero there too because he went to Ireland to try to bring about peace uh, to the people there and he was a friend of uh, 
uh, the, the people there. Uh, so uh, he, done, he has done so many things that, and I wanted to say, and everyone has beat me to it though, that one person is responsible for the naming of this school. One person, it wasn't a committee, it wasn't a group of people that got together and did it. It was one person, it was Joe D. Joe D made that, Not they didn't sit down. He decided that this should be named after my brother. He and my brother had a uh, friendship, you know, and I want to thank him. And, and, and not just the school, which is so very important, but if you've gone to the Hall of Records uh, and uh, you've seen the Payne uh, Plaza there, you see a statue of Donald Payne. Donald Payne is a statue there, along with people like Dr. King and others. And the only reason is there because Joe D. had the idea. We need to put I here. He was the one that made it possible that the, pain, the Donald Payne statue is there and what he has done is known to so many people. And I want to thank Do Joe D. for that, that, what he's done for us. And not just myself alone, but I'd like for all the people that are members of the Payne family to raise your hand or at least stand. I, let you, I want to know that we've come from many places that to wanted to thank Joe and be here today. So please, at least raise your hand and so people can see those over there here. And some of you may know uh, that um, we have uh, formed a foundation, a Donald Payne Global Foundation, Donald Payne Senior Global Foundation, because we believe that it's, and education is so very important, no question about it. And we learned over the years that young people growing up in the inner city was not, were not being taught things about civics and government and how important your vote is and things of that nature, and they just were left out. Then Donald Payne grew up in the city of Newark, and you know, we were from a cold water flat, you know, and, and things like that. And I've, I'm sure when people read about Donald Payne or read about him, you know, being he also represented the Congress in the United Nations. He, he became the international chairman of the Refugee and Rehabilitation Commission, Committee of the YMCA, and he visited 80 countries to find people living in poverty, et cetera, and try to bring that about. I want people to know that, 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 that he did that. But many people say, well, he must, have gone, he must have been born with a silver spoon. No, I tell people, no, we grew up in Belleville, Silver Lake, in a cold water flat, a cold water flat. And the thing that took us out was that education. Education is so very, very important. And I, but they weren't teaching that in, in, within inner cities. And I wanted these youngsters to know that they can be Donald Payne too, that they can do the same thing that he did if they get that education. So what our foundation has done is started a program called for Payne Scholars. And right now there are 15 students that are going to school right now at uh, 13th Street that will be coming here who are learning about the United Nations. They're learning about what Donald Payne did. They're learning that they can do it too because they can rise to that too. And so these youngsters are so excited and they're juniors and seniors at our school and they're being taught college credits and they're earning college credits at juniors and seniors through from Seton Hall, a little relationship that we have with Seton Hall. So these youngsters are growing up saying, I can do that too, you mean to tell me? I can be a congressperson, you mean to tell me I can be a diplomat? Oh yes, you can. And we're very, very proud of that organization. It's called, the, those youngsters are called the Payne Scholars. And I have two people who are on, the many people on the board, but I'd like to have former congresswoman Lynn Woolsey, who was here, who flew in from California. She served in Congress with Donald Payne. And did so. I would just like her to stand up or wave it, so she's here somewhere. She came in, came in uh, overnight to be here. And next to her is uh, young fellow Kier Milan, who is a member of our board. He also came in from California. He's supporting the foundation of the, of the Payne Foundation. So I, I just want to thank all of you for being here. I want to thank Joe D. Uh, and I want you to know that we are going to do everything we can. When I visited Donald Payne in Georgetown Hospital one day, I was there, and he was, John Lewis happened to be visiting then too. And John Lewis was holding my brother's hand when I walked in. And John Lewis, and my brother said, I'm so tired, but I have so much more work to do. I have so much more to do. And John Lewis said, you rest, Donald. You just rest. You've done your share. The Payne Foundation, the Payne School, will carry on the work for Donald Payne. And we're happy that he is going to be able to continue the work. And I want to thank all of you for being here. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Reverend Mamie Lee. Good afternoon. My name is Yvette Lee. I'm the daughter of Reverend Mamie Lee, District Leader of the West Ward. On behalf of my family, and I mean my grandchildren, they say thank you. My oldest grandson this morning said to me, Gigi, does this mean that we won't hear about the technical school anymore now that it's going to open? <laughs> my mother worked very hard. She moved from New York to Newark you embraced her with your love, and I just could not be so more proud of her. So it was a privilege for me to fly in from Florida to take this moment to be with my mother. I'm going to let her speak. Unfortunately, mom has been around a very long time. She's 94 years old now. So as you know, as we get older, certain things tend to leave us. But she's here, she's happy, and we're proud of her, so I'm not gonna talk too much longer so mom can tell you thank you. I would like to say thank you to everyone that worked with me so faithful in my community. And some of you know exactly what I had to go through with, but I was determined that we would do better than what we did, and we have gone higher. But we go to go higher and higher. Amen? Yeah. I'm going to say I love you, and you wonder why I say amen. Because since then, I have been preaching all these years, but I'm going to preach on. <laughs> Give God a hand. Give God a hand clap. Give, say it. Do it like you mean it. I know you don't want me to preach now, do you? <laughs> Thank you. All right, we'll be closing the program shortly. But the reason I wanted Mamie Lee to stay up here with me, Reverend Mamie Lee, is because for 20 years we've had a relationship when they closed down this facility, the United Hospital, in 1997. She lives right, not too far from, she lives on 9th Avenue across the street. And uh, she's been my partner for 20 years. You know, uh, when the facility was vacant, people wanted to kill me for whatever reasons. But the only one who stood with me was this young lady. Uh, the previous administration was going to have our Essex County Hospital Center move here. But what I did is I put together a committee of professionals, and you remember Sheila, and also uh, community people. And they didn't want a hospital summit. They wanted something better. They wanted a school. They wanted something that's going to spur up the West Ward. And uh, all I want to say to you, Mamie, is thank you. You are absolutely the best, and I love you. You know, all the accolades that everybody mentioned my name, it wasn't me. It's a, it's, it's a team effort. For 16 years, it's been a team in here in Essex County. It's been uh, my administrative team, my 3,500 county employees, plus working in cooperation with the Freeholder Board. That's how we've been able to get things together. You know, I always said, good government is good politics. There's no question Essex County has the best government in the state of New Jersey. Not because of me, it's because of the people that work here. Pol <laughs> Politically, we have the best chairman in the state of New Jersey. And when you have them both working together, 
You could produce good things like this. And no question, we deserve the best because Essex County produces a huge plurality. So I'd like to thank my brother, Chairman Leroy Jones. Thank you for your support. <laughs> Senator Bob Menendez, let me tell you, he is the best United States Senator in the, state, in the, in the United States. We are lucky to have Senator Menendez. And anytime I call, he answers the phone, and he says, what do you want now, Joe? He's nice in the beginning, but then he always follows and produces. Bob, thank you for your support in Essex County. You're the best. You know, Shayla was talking about Donald Payne Sr. being the first African American to be in the United States Senator. Well, Sheila, okay, was the first African American to be the uh, speaker in the state of New Jersey. She's the first African-American to be the lieutenant government in New Jersey. And this is for all the young people. Donald Payne just happened to be black. Jill Oliver just happened to be black. But the reason both of them there, because they were professionals. It didn't matter if the black, white, orange, green. It's because of who they were. They were the right people for the job. Congratulations, Sheila. <laughs> Joe McCullen, great West War Councilman. Joe, thank you and thank Rufus Johnson. You know, we had, we finished this project within three years, demolition and building the facility on time and on budget. And I don't want to thank Dopco, Hassan, I know you're here, Rubino Architects, and Jingoli for being our managers of this facility and making sure it didn't get done. Thank you all very much. A special thank you, you can hold your applause that I want to thank, that need, these people need to be recognized because they lived this project day in and day out, and they were very much supporters. Frank Cacciola, hold your applause. Ralph Chalella, Mark Flater, Anthony Abaleo, Jim Simonson, Aunt Aniba Rainbows, Freeholder Rufus Johnson, Courtney Gassion, Fitz, my driver, he's tired of coming by to school five times a day. <laughs> Martin Williams, our IT guy. Dr. Peterson, his administration team, and the faculty that works for our School of Technology. Thank you all very, very much. <laughs> Gabe Raspoli, our security. But most important, a thank you goes out to the, our young men and women who are students of our School of Technology. Congratulations. You know, first of all, Donald Payne, former Congressman Donald Payne and I, it was a no-brainer. There's nobody who's done more for the city of Newark, New Jersey, or this country and international than Donald Payne. We had a lot in common, me and Donald Payne. We both went to Barringer High School. What, no chairs? We were, both, we were both athletes. He played halfback, I played quarterback. I think, he, I think he was defensive back too. He became an elected official, I became an elected official. And that's where it ends. <laughs> you know, one thing about Donald Payne is that no matter where he traveled, whether it was in New Jersey, whether throughout the country or internationally, he never forgot his roots. He never forgot Newark, New Jersey. And he always put the people from Newark first. He loved the city of Newark and he bragged wherever he went about the city of Newark. And there's no question, I always said, I love Donald Payne, I love the Payne family. The Payne family, the DiVincenzo family will always be one working cooperatively together. You know, uh, First of all, I want to recognize Sheriff Mondo Vontor. Thank you. Make sure this place stays secure. Calvin West, thank you for being here. Bonnie Watson, thank you. 
You were very much part of this, Blonnie. You know, here's what I want to tell you. When he was dying and he was in Washington, D.C., he did not want to die in Washington, D.C. He wanted to be home. He wanted to be here in Newark, New Jersey. So we, uh, the family, had a, a plane from Washington, D.C., all the way to here by himself, a single, it was like an ambulance up, up in the sky, and he came here. We had sheriff, remember? We had all the sheriff's cars up there meeting him to give him an escort to the hospital. And we all went on the turn mat, and we all waited for Donald Payne. When he came off, and I told Bill this, when he came off of uh, the plane, he was being carried in. He turned to me, and I always remember this. It's not what he said. It's what he did. He always went like this. And he was saying to me, thank you. Keep up the good work. And that's why it's so important, students. This day is about Donald Payne. For his legacy to continue, all of you have to succeed. Thank you very much.